Amen. We give God the praise, give God the glory, give God the honor for being able to come back again to another Bible study here at Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church located at 3835 Whitewater Road right here in the city of Valdosta, Georgia. We're glad that you came out and listening in to worship with us on this evening. Tell a neighbor, tell a friend to join us. Amen. Share this link with your family and friends that we are on. Amen. The air sharing the good news of the gospel on Wednesday night. We're here at Mount Calvary. God bless you. Let us go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you. God, we just give you praise and God, we just give you glory. And God, we just give you honor on this blessed night. We thank you for being able to come, Lord, to your house of worship once again to share your word, the good news of the gospel with your people on tonight, God. We thank you for these that are tuning in, these that are listening, these that are hearing this telecast, this broadcast on tonight, God. We pray that you would just bless them in a special way, moving their lives in a special way, God. You know what they're standing there you are right now, God. We just ask you to just touch them, oh God, and we just thank you for them and give your name and praise and give your name the glory and we give your name and honor, God. Bless them indeed, oh Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We lift them up. And we thank you for all things. Give us clarity, understanding your word on tonight, that you will get the praise, you will get the glory, you will get the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you again. We're just glad that you have come to worship with us here at Calvary on tonight for our Wednesday night word right here at Calvary. Amen. Just a few announcements I want to share with you. Happy birthday to all those that are celebrating in the month of February. Happy birthday to you, you, and especially you. Join us on each and every Wednesday night for Wednesday Night Word here at Calvary at 7 o'clock p.m., 7 o'clock p.m. And remember, our conference call Sunday School at 920 each Sunday. The number to dial is 701-802-5337. That's 701-802-5337. The access code is 683-1205. That's 683-1205 and the pound symbol. Uh, you can join us on each and every Sunday at 10.15 a.m. for our morning worship here at Calvary online live stream. Link to join us is worship with Cal Mount Calvary, mtcalvary.org forward slash live. That's www.worshipwithmtcalvary.org forward slash live. You may give your tithe and offering. By download application Giblefy to your phone or the link www.worshipwithmtcalvary.org forward slash giving. That's www.worshipwithmtcalvary.org forward slash giving. You can also drop off your tithe and offering to our designated deacons in the front parking area on uh, Sundays at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And during that time, you can pick up your community supplies as well. We ask you to please continue to pray one for another. Special prayer request for the following. Mother Lily uh, McDougall, Mother Elizabeth Brown, uh, Minister Edward McDougall, Minister Brother Robert uh, McDougall, Sister Madison McDougall, Deaconess Bertha Neal, Sister Joanne Kaya, and Brother Andy Hart, Minister Eric Curitan, Brother Arthur Barton, and Brother Reginald Black. Please pray for one for another as well. For those that's being challenged to through the coronavirus pandemic, personally, physically, directly, or indirectly. I want to remind you, as always, that COVID-19 drive-through free testing is being conducted by the Lyons County Health Department. The number to call is 229-333-5257. That's 229-333-5257. You'll be given an appointment time and a PUI number when you call, and you can register online at covid19.dph.ga.gov. That's COVID number one nine dot dph dot ga dot gov. The client will need to complete the information as outlined, and you'll be able to get a PUI number as well as an appointment time. You will need an email address to receive the results for the information or a smartphone device. We want to let you know this is an attorney to hold it on the phone and to get an appointment. You can call and do it. You can also do it online as well. Test only takes less than five minutes. They are being conducted at the Lowndes County Health Department, located 206 South Patterson Street, right here in the city of Valdosta, Georgia. That's 206 South Patterson Street, right here in the city of Valdosta, Georgia. Please, ma'am, please, sir, we ask you to continue to maintain uh, the CDC guidelines and the local health department guidelines. Amen. That you will continue to be safe wearing your mask, social distancing, washing your hands and doing whatever is necessary to make sure that we stay safe during this pandemic, that we may be able to turn back to services as soon as possible, that we can worship the Lord one to, again together in one place at one time. Amen. God bless you. 
for the last few weeks, we've been talking about a subject, and tonight I want to kind of complete this subject up for you on tonight, out of Matthew, the sixth chapter, and verse number 31, St. Matthew, the sixth chapter, and verse number 31. We want to talk with you, amen, from, amen, the last few weeks we've been talking about this. It says in the Word of God, out of St. Matthew, the sixth chapter, and verse 31, it says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be shall be added unto you. Therefore take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is evil thereof. That's verses six, chapter six, verses thirty one through verse 34 St. Matthew the 6th chapter verse 31 through verse number 34 we've been talking about this for the last couple of weeks and want to con come to the conclusion of this subject on tonight don't worry be happy don't worry be happy we learned uh, a few weeks back that worry is to be un uneasy in the mind to feel anxiety about something to fret increasingly and comes from the old English word that means to strangle, amen, to take the breath, to take the life out of something. Worry takes the life out of living, amen, what worry is. We don't want to be a part of the word. Don't worry, be happy, amen. Don't worry, be happy that we want to talk with you on tonight, part number three. Don't be afraid the prophet answered those who are with us are more than those who are with them. That's when, amen, Elijah was telling his servant about, amen, the angel of the Lord being with him and being with him through, amen, what they were going through at that time. And I want to encourage you on tonight that when worry happens, we said this, amen, on both lessons and reminding you about this, when worry happens, that's when we assume the responsibility that God and never intended for us to have. Worry happens when we assume the responsibility that God never intended on us to have. When we take the place of worry, that is something that we put on ourselves that God never intended for you and I to take a part of. And I want to give you some steps, amen, toward freeing yourself from worry on tonight. Amen. I want to give you a few steps in order to help you free yourself from worry on tonight. Number one, I want to talk with you about, amen, is meditate on God's word. Meditate on God's word daily. Meditate on God's word daily. If you don't put nothing in, you won't get nothing out. If you don't put nothing in, you won't get anything out. But meditate on God's word daily. Plan a time daily. And you can spend some time, even if it's only 15 minutes, reading your Bible. Think about what you read and go over the phrases, go over the scriptures and put, in your, put your name in place of the pronouns in that scripture. Apply on each verse to a specific situation in your life. Memorize you some passages of scripture that will help you through what you are going through. God's word is powerful and it will renew and protect your mind. You got to put some in in order to get something out. You got to meditate on the word of God. David said the word of God have I hid in my heart that I might not what sin against you. We talked about worry is a sin because we lack the faith to believe in God. When we worry, we take God out of the equation. So we must meditate on his word daily. Get you, amen. We, there's so many ways to get the word, amen, in these times, in these times of technology. You can get the word downloaded on your phone. You got other things on there. Why well, don't put the word on there? Amen. You got all these other, amen, applications on there. Put the word on there and get it where, amen, they can flash you up a scripture every day. Amen. As you can read or you can uh, uh, register and subscribe to different people that have 
thoughts for the day. Uh, there's the daily bread. You can even download the daily bread on there. Amen. And they give you a scripture and give you a, uh, a illustration every day and give you something to think about in a little prayer. And, you know, to get your mind meditating on the word and take your mind off of your situation and off of what you're going through. Meditate on the word of God. Amen. And when you put the word in you, when you put the word down and it'll build your faith up, well, your faith will push worry out of the way. Don't worry. Be happy. Meditate on the word. And you know, someone said, well, how long I got to spend? As long as it takes for you to spend and getting your amen deliverance from the Lord. It may not take you uh, 15 minutes a day. It may take you a little longer. It may take you a little less. But amen. But put some time in. Amen. With the word of God and meditate on God's word. We quickly pick up the paper. Amen. We quick to find out what's happening in the news. We quick to look at CNN and a headline news and CBS and all the other. Amen. Evening news, morning news, noonday news. And amen. You bombarded with all that, all that uh, chaos going on in the world. And then you wonder why you're worried about things because you haven't put any time in with the word. Put some time in with the word. And when you put some time in with the word of God and meditate on the word, God can take that worry and move it out of the way of your life. Meditate on God's word daily. Meditate on God's word daily. Number two, don't worry, be happy. Condition yourself to relax. Condition yourself to relax. Some people are so tight and so tied up and tangled up. They're so stiff. They, they, they just about to explode. Amen. You can't say nothing to them. You don't know how to approach them. Don't know what to say, not to say. Don't know how to call. Don't know how to call them. Don't know when to text them and say good morning. They might get mad about that. They so tight. They so they they so uh, uh, in such a stressful state that they they like a balloon that you mean anything come along and might pop them. Amen. It might cause them to explode. But condition yourself to relax. Choose a phrase from the scripture or a hymn that you can repeat to yourself at the first hint of trouble and anxiety. Find you a hymn, find you a scripture, find you a saying, find you something that can help you uh, relax and release that anxiety when you feel it coming on. Amen. You know, it's on this, tell it to Jesus or God cares for me or the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want something to help you. Amen. To relax, to relax your mind, relax what you're about to say, what you're about to do, how you're about to react. Amen. Find you something. Amen. To relax your heart, your mind, your spirit. Amen. Uh, if you just got to say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. That help you relax. Say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. And you, you ain't got necessarily to say it all out loud if you don't want to. Amen. You can say it in your mind and in your heart and in your spirit. God knows and God hears and he understands what you're doing and condition yourself to relax. Amen. As you repeat the phrase, you will be encouraged yourself with this message and remind yourself to what? Relax. Amen. Amen. You say, ain't no harm done calling on Jesus and calling on the name of the Lord. Condition yourself. Condition yourself. You condition yourself to relax. Find you something, amen, a scripture or a phrase or, or something that you would say to help you relax and get out of that mode of worrying, out of that mode of about to explode, about to pop, about to go off, about to lose your cool, amen, about to, amen, do you lose control of yourself, amen, find you something and some word, some phrase, some scripture, some uh, something that you got, amen, maybe on your phone you got a picture of some saying or something that you can look at and help you, amen, get your mind off of what Amen. You're facing at that particular time that cause you, amen, to relax and release that anxiety, that stressful situation that you in. Condition yourself. It says condition yourself to relax. It's something that you got to do. It's something you got to repetitively do, amen, to get in that position, to get in that mode, to get in that transition of conditioning yourself to relax. Don't worry. Be happy. Yeah. Meditate on God's word daily. Amen. Condition yourself to what? Relax. Thirdly, amen, a lot of people do this, and it's a great time, and it's a great, wonderful thing. Listen to soothing music. Don't worry, be happy. Listen to soothing music. Just as David's music on the harp soothed King Saul's anxiety 
and that depression. Hymns and spiritual songs are wonderful tranquilizers for us today. When you listen to garbage all the time and the violence, music and cussing and all kind of things and calling people out of their names and all those kind of things, that's not the kind of music I'm talking about. But listen to soothing music that amen will amen soothe your heart and your spirit while you are in that situation. Listen to that soothing music and you know songs that say, I know the Lord will Amen. Work it out after a while. Amen. Something that can uplift you and something that can strengthen you, something that can calm you down, something that can bring a peace about you. Amen. About your surroundings and the atmosphere and the environment that you in something soothing that can help you. Amen. Come to your senses and come to yourself and not amen be amen erratic or radical or something of that sort, but to listen to some soothing music. You know, I know the Lord will make a way somehow. Something that will bring you some soothing uh, soul for amen to your heart and to your mind and to your spirit. Amen. amen. Haven't you had the experience of hearing a song and a hymn that fill your spirit and ease your mind? You know, it's a song that all of us love. Amen. That brings us peace and consolation. Amen. Somewhere Amen. Down life journey that there's a song that brings us so much peace and so much calm to our lives that, that we can hear that song. We can sing. We might not have the greatest voice in the world, but make joyful noise unto the Lord. And if you make it to the Lord, that's all that matters. It ain't about what somebody else hearing, somebody else knowing about it, but it's about you and the Lord. And make that, amen, being that make it ease your mind and your spirit. You might want to listen to a recording or play an instrument or sing to yourself. Reflect on the words and relax into the melody of the song or the music. And, you know, you have phones and you have all kind of electronic devices that you can pull up a list and play it or whatever. That song that you love, amen, that will relax you, amen, put you, amen, in the right frame of mind and the right spirit that you may be able to battle that thing, amen, and come out victorious, that you don't have to be worried, be all tightened up and all, amen, in a rage, amen, but you can be calm, you can be peaceful, you can be restful, amen, you can be, amen, whatever God wants you to be and be of that greatness of that God requires of you to be. So, amen, listen to you some soothing music, amen, some sweet melody, and get you into the spirit and into the presence of almighty God. Condition yourself to relax. Meditate on God's word. Listen to soothing music. Amen. Another one I want to talk to you about is talk through your problems. Amen. Don't worry. Be happy. Some help to talk through your problems. When you're worried about an issue or relationship, don't fail to co communicate, but talk through your problems. If you need to talk with your husband or your spouse or your wife, schedule a time when you can honestly tell them or her your concerns and listen to what they have to say. T communication is a two-way thing, talking, hearing, and listening. You got to have that flow, talking, hearing, and listening. If it's necessary, talk with your supervisor, employer, or some about some troublesome aspects of the job. Talk with your children. Listen to them as well. Worries expand into giant problems. Worry expands into a giant problem when they are left in your imagination. It might not be what you think it is. It might not be what you think it is, but you put it in, you, you keep it on your mind, you're worried about it, and it becomes a big ma imagination that is really not a reality. Amen. It's really not a reality. So they, they need to be, these words need to be exposed and then with it down to size. Sometimes, you know, we make things bigger than what they really are. I said we make things bigger than what they really are. Amen. We magnify the problem and the problem is not that great. But when you talk with someone through your problems, what you was worried about probably and sometimes can be easily addressed and fixed. And sometimes there's nothing to it. Amen. Really, sometimes there's nothing to it. But we, the enemy will make you think. The enemy will put it in your mind, put it in your heart, 
and cause you to react on something that's really a part of your imagination. And when you talk it through, when you talk it through, now, now listen, don't talk to everybody. Don't talk to everybody. But find you somebody that is confident, amen, that you want to share your worry or your concerns with. Don't keep it bottled up. But talk with somebody. Don't worry. Be happy. Express it. Amen. And talk with somebody that you can trust. And let me tell you something. Sometimes you just need to talk to the Lord. I say sometimes you need to talk to the Lord. Talk it through with the Lord. He hear you. You can sit there and talk to him. He hear you. He understands. Well, sometimes you express these things and you talk to the Lord about it. The Lord can hear you. And the Lord began to speak to your spirit and speak to your mind and your heart and begin to open up some things. You open up your understanding and let you know, baby, it ain't what you think it is. It ain't bad as what you thought it was. It's not like that. It's really not like that. It's smaller than what it, we, we got this handle. God said, we got this handle. You, you worried about the wrong thing. We got it covered. We got it taken care of. So we need to learn how to talk through our what problems. Talk through our problems problems and God will help us. Amen. God will help us to release that thing. Amen. Worries expand to giant problems when they are left to our imagination. We need to release it. Amen. And release it from our lips, our heart and our mind and let God deal with it. Amen. For us. Yes. The next point I want to talk with you about limit your worry time. Limit your worry time. It's like what? Limit your worry time. Counsel suggests that this technique for many people who are prone to anxiety, set aside 15 minutes a day for activity, active worry, and no more. Amen. Limit your worry time. In other words, don't sit there and worry about it all day. Don't sit there and ponder on it all the time. Amen. If it comes to your mind, then, hit, then, then, then deal with it. Then let it go. Don't sit there for all day long. You worried about a certain thing all day long. You That's all on your mind. That's all you're thinking about. There are three positive results from this. When you don't, amen, when you limit your time of worry. Amen. There are three positive results from that. The technique is set aside 15 minutes a day for active worry and no more. This will keep worry from distracting you for the rest of the day. Don't spend a whole lot of time on worry. You know, we're human. Things going to come to our mind. Things going to come to our heart. Things going to cross our path. But we don't have to sit there and wallow in it. We don't have to sit there and wallow in it. If worse than things come to mind, jot them down on the card and plan to think about them later. There are three positive results from this. First, you can accomplish a great deal more during the day when you're free from anxiety. You can accomplish more. If you just sit there and have a pity party about the situation that you're going through, you're not going to get anything accomplished the whole day. But let it go. Let it go. Secondly, when your worry time comes, you better you better able to deal with the problem because you feel good about your productive day, that you did something positive in the day instead of worrying about that one particular thing all day long. You can devote your total attention to your concern and list them in order of seriousness. Some things don't even need, be, don't need to be on the list. Amen. You need to learn how when your worry time comes, you better deal with them better when you have done some things besides sit there all day and worry about your problem. Thirdly, by the time you get to the worries, the problems may well be shrunk in importance and may not even seem worth worrying about after all. May have dissipated, may have gone, disappeared, may have gone out of existence. But if you sit there from the start of the day, worried about that thing, worried about this, that, and the other, then you're going to be bombarded with that. That's going to be on your mind all day. You can't, you're worried about that, and you're supposed to be doing this, and you can't get that done right because you're still worried about this, that, and the other. You can't get anything moving in the right direction because you focus it on what you're worried about. But don't let worry take up all of your time. Amen. Don't let it take up all of the time. Yeah, we are human. Yes, we are human. Yes, we are Amen. Still in the flesh. We hadn't went to heaven yet. We ain't got a crown on our head. We ain't got a long white robe on yet. Amen. We ain't, amen, gathered around the throne of grace all day yet. Amen. We ain't walking around heaven yet. So we're still in the flesh. We're still human. And so things come to our mind. Amen. I understand that. But you don't have to live in that thing. 
Yeah, so you don't have to live in it. Amen. You, 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 it comes across your mind. You let it go. Okay, I got that. Okay, well, I'll deal with that later. Don't sit there and ponder on it. Don't sit there and wallow in it. Don't sit there and stay in it all day long and all night long. Move on. Move on. Limit your worry time. But if you let it bombard 24 hours of your day, then you won't have room for nothing else but worry. And worry will have consumed your whole life and took the life out of living for you. Don't worry. Be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. Uh, design a plan of action. I say design a plan of action. Suppose your child you're worried about. Do everything you can to protect him or her. But always have a reliable person to care for your child when you aren't there. Teach children to tell you if anything, anyone touches them or touches them inappropriately any, anyway. Warn the child never to go with strangers. Teach them and her the password that everyone must say. Do everything you can, but then commit that child to the Lord for his protection. If that one of your worry about your children, just commit them to the Lord. Give them over to the Lord. Turn them over to God. You cannot be with them 24 hours a day. Amen. Amen. You don't know what they're doing, what they ain't doing, or what's going on around them at all times. All you can do is commit them into the hand of the Lord. Some people worry all the time about certain things, and all you need to do is commit it into the hand of the Lord. Put it, pray over it, believe God for it, and keep it moving. I said pray over it, believe God for it, and keep it moving. Perhaps the thought of inviting people to dinner fills you with anxiety. You have a couple of options. You can refuse to entertain or you can try to entertain and make yourself a sick with worrying about the process. Better yet, plan a menu and have it prepared ahead of time. Arrange for the kids to spend the night with some relative or friend. Clean your house ahead of time Expect for, uh, except for the surface things. Rest an hour before your guests arrive. Then put everything together and enjoy your guests. Instead of worrying about a perfect performance, focus on your attention on building relationships. You know, sometimes like things like that, where you got somebody coming to dinner, you worried about this, worried about that. Do some things ahead of time. You know, some people like to do all stuff at all at the last minute. That put anxiety on them, they put worry on them, cause them chaos and everything. Be a better planner. Plan, have a plan of action. Be a planner, be a better planner in life, and you won't have to worry about a lot of things that comes your way. Be a better planner. Amen. If you know you don't like getting up in the morning, amen, instead of you worried about being late for work, why don't you get your clothes ready at night? Yeah. You know, set everything out that you need to do. Get your lunch ready. Get your, your everything set out that you need. That way, if you wake up a few minutes late, you won't be in such a panic mode and be worrying about this and that. And then you, you may get so worried and so frustrated when you get to work. Then time somebody hits you with something, you go off. Because you didn't plan. Be a better planner. Plan, 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 plan. See, sometimes people, they want to come to church when church was open. They want to come to church and then they get up there trying to get their clothes ready for church and get that. And then the, then the outfit don't work out like they want it to. Then they don't want to come to church. You know, that's how the enemy works. But if you get up and plan and get your clothes ready for church the night before and get figure out what you're going to wear and what you're going to do and get everything set up and get your gas in your car and all that taken care of, that when the time to come to church, all you got to do is wake up and do what you need to do, take a, take a bath or whatever, and then, and then put your clothes on and keep going, keep it moving. But when you do other things and put the other things away, don't plan and don't print it properly, then worry can come in and creep in and cause us Amen. To be frustrated and have anxiety that we don't need. Plan. Design a plan of action. Design a, a plan of action. If you want to go on vacation, you don't want you want to do something later on in the year and go on vacation. Don't let that worry you that you don't have the money out of resort. Plan for it. Plan. Save a little here. Save a little there. Get your plan together. Amen. Maybe you can't go this year. Plan it for next year. Amen. Get your plan of attack together. But don't let it worry you. They don't take it. Let it take the anxiety and take the life out of you. The enemy wants to pressure you and cause you to have problems that you don't necessarily need, but plan, plan. Next, I want to talk about cultivate and nurture and develop the awareness of God's presence in you. Cultivate it, nurture and develop the awareness of God's presence in you. Jesus promised never what to leave us or forsake us. Don't worry, be happy. He is in us in the person of the Holy Spirit. 
He wants to live out his life through us. He gives us the strength for our tests and the wisdom for the decision, the courage to face difficulties and the victory over temptation. Keep up a running conversation with him in your mind. Cultivate a relationship of having the presence of God in your life. In other words, the song says, take the Lord with you everywhere that you go. Let God be an ever-present person in your life. Invite him in. If you let the Lord be a part of your life and a part of your goals and your, amen, your mission and your, amen, admiration, things that you want to do, amen, and let him be a part of your destiny and part of your, amen, roadmap of your life, keep him as a part of it, amen. He'll bless you real good. He'll take the worry out. Sometimes we want to bring the Lord in later. Bring him in at the first start. Bring him in early in the morning. And bring him in your life and your plans and your goals and your visions early. Bring the Lord, put the Lord at the top of the list instead of at the last call. God need to be the first call and not the last call. Amen. Cultivate and nurture. Amen. Develop an awareness of God's presence in you. Next, replace worry with prayer. Replace worry with prayer. Paul gave the the Philippines some excellent advice about worry when he wrote, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which then sees all understanding regard your heart, your mind in Christ. That's Philippians four and six and seven. Instead of worrying, pray. You have a father in heaven who is real and who loves you and will provide for you in everything that you need. He wants you to pray unto him, demonstrating your dependence on him, and he will give you unexplainable peace that will serve as a guardian over your mind. As Peter said in Peter, 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast all your cares, cast all your anxiety on him because why he cares for you. Amen. Replace worry with prayer. This is such a practical verse for us to know. When something is on your mind that fills you with anxiety, write it down on the card, hold it on the card, up to the Lord and him to and read it and say, Lord, I'm casting this in your hand. God, you handle this. God, you deal with it. Right across your word, I cast it in the name of the Lord. And whenever that thing comes in your mind, sneak back into your mind, say out loud, that problem belongs to Jesus. I throw it on his shoulder. I cast all my cares upon him for what he cares for me. Keep the cards to remind you of your commitment, then go over them in the years and time. It would encourage you to see how, just how the Lord took care of each of those worries that you had in your life. Take them cards, take them right down and say, well, that word, write it down and say, Lord, I cast it to you. I cast all my cares to you and scratch it out in Jesus' name. Cast it to the Lord. God cares for you. Cast all of your anxiety. Cast all your cares unto the Lord because why? He cares for you. Replace your worry with prayer. Replace your worry with prayer. And then uh, my last point I want to get to tonight and close out this lesson, get help from others. No man or no woman is an island by themselves. Many times we sh- we, when we share it with friends of something that is troubling us, we feel better immediately. Often my friends have wisdom from their own experience or from the scripture that encourages us or enlightens us. Somebody else might be going through or went through the same thing that you're going through. So get help some time from others. We pray together. By the time you pray with your friend, God use another believer, another believer now, another believer to relieve my anxiety and strengthen my faith. Remember, we are members of one body, one family, and we are commanded to bear one another's burdens. We are here for one another, not to talk about them, not to down them, not to spread their business, not to amen, to not be the true friend. But we are, with the Bible say, we are commanded to bear to one another's burdens. If you are a warrior, God wants to heal you. He has given you promises through his word, his protection and his provision. We will all have a choice. We can keep worrying, ruin our mental and our physical health and retard our spiritual development. Or we can cast our cares on the strong shoulders of a loving savior who has promised to give us peace. We can cast it on the Lord. Let me illustrate how that works. Let's say you were standing about 20 feet away from me on tonight and I toss you my car keys to you. If someone come up to you and say, 
Brother Vincent, Pastor Vincent, I need the keys to your car. I need to use it. I, will, I can say, I can't help you. I cast my keys over to him. I don't have them anymore. When I give him, I cast my keys to somebody else. And you come ask me for my keys. I don't have them anymore. I don't give them to somebody else. That's what you need to do with our worries. We need to cast them over to the Lord and don't take them back. I said we need to cast them over to the Lord and don't take them back. If Satan brings worry and thought to your mind, what if these terrible things happen? Then you can tell him to talk to God about it because it's in his hand and not yours. It's in God's hand and it's not in your hand. Once you do that, change will begin to take place in your life. Problems you've been fretting about in years will start being solved. You'll no longer be tying God's hand with worry. Amen. Amen. You'll no longer be tying God's hand with worry. His power can begin to operate because you actually in faith cast all your cares upon him. Remember, though God will not take your cares away from you, you have to give them to him. God will not take your cares from you. You have to give them to him. Then you have to replace those worries with the word. You are the one who has to keep your thoughts under control. But my brothers and sisters, you can do it. You cannot, amen. Like I said, say, don't worry, be happy. The greater one dwells in you. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. He is able to put you over and commit you to not worrying. You'll never have to worry again. If you cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you, you, and especially you. I hope I've helped you out on tonight. As I said, and I'll go over these quickly, meditate on God's word daily. Condition yourself to relax. Listen to soothing music. Talk through your problems. Limit your worry time. Design a plan of action. Cultivate, nurture, develop the awareness of God's presence in you. Replace your worry with prayer and get help from others. In other words, turn it over to Jesus and he'll make it all right. Don't worry. Be happy and give it to the Lord. Worry. Is when we take it out of God's hand and put it in our hand. Worry is when we like the faith to believe God to bring us out. Don't worry. Be happy. Cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. God bless you. If you're not saved tonight and don't know the Lord and the partner of your sin, I want to invite you to meet Jesus the Christ as head of your life. And all you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, my mind, my soul, and my spirit. Forgive me for all my sins and my transgression. Save me. I want to live for you. I want to walk in you. I want to be your child. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you tonight for this word. We thank you for these, your people on tonight. And God, we pray that tonight that God, these uh, suggestions and these topics and these things that we have said to them on tonight that will help them not worry but be happy. That they will not Amen. Trust the enemy, but they will trust in you and believe you at your word. That They will cast all their cares upon you because why you care for us. That They will use faith instead of worry. They will walk by faith and not by sight. That They will not take it out of your hand, but leave it in your hand. And you will take care of all our problems and our concerns and our worries of this life. And God, we pray that you would encourage them and strengthen them on tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. And we pray your power and your blessing, oh, Father God. Thank you for these on tonight, God. Bless them, O oh God. You know what they're standing near you right now, God. Touch those on the prayer list, those on the sick list, those in the hospital, nursing home, prison wall, whatever it may be, O oh Father God. Just touch them right now, God. Touch, heal, set free, and deliver right now, God. Bring them out and turn things around for them in their favor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, God. And we give your name the praise and give your name the glory and your honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the sweet community of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you henceforth now and forever. And all of God people say amen. And don't amen forget that you don't have any problems, but all you need is faith in God. Until the next time, be blessed and highly favored of the Lord. God bless you.